advertising basics. So this is gonna be a podcast where we talk very basic advertising stuff with Destiny Wishon of Better AMS. Super excited to dive into some of the most basic questions of how to set up a campaign, some of the common terminology that's thrown around. So if you haven't uh, driven in the advertising seat, this is the podcast for you. Selling on Amazon is difficult. It's everything but passive income. I share videos like this one to help Amazon sellers on their journey. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. When Amazon turns your world upside down, tune into My Amazon Guy to land safely and grow your Amazon business. I'm now joined by Destiny. Thanks so much for coming on the My Amazon Guy podcast. Of course, excited to be here. So this is not the first time we've had Destiny on, and she is an incredible person, human being, and podcast guest. Thanks so much. <laughs> I'm excited. There's nothing better than just like your organic conversation. So we're going to have an organic conversation today. No script, just simply talking about what's on our minds today as it relates to advertising, Amazon, or whatever. So here we go. Destiny, what's on your mind today? Well, the biggest thing that's honestly been on my mind as I'm reading all of the 2021 predictions, all the new and shiny things that are happening in Amazon advertising is just how far we've come along since kind of the OG days of Amazon. And I've been trying to do a better job of getting in the groups and just answering questions that are really contextual, not just blanket answers. And with that, I feel like there's been a ton of reoccurring topics that come up of like, what do you need to start with when you're starting Amazon advertising? So that, that is a great topic. And there's, there's a lot of people who had been doing ads for a long time, but it's also valuable information for them because when they've been doing it so long, they forget to go back to some of these core basics, right? So I'm, I'm sure we're going to be talking a little bit about sponsored products today. <laughs> exactly the OG. I I was telling you this earlier, but I remember like the first time I logged into a Seller Central account and you just have no idea. It's just so much information. There's not a lot of fantastic training out there. Like the Amazon course has gotten better than what it was, but there's a lot. There's so many different things to cover. Amazon ad certification like came out like about a year ago. Um, so Everybody gets certified, but it's interesting that uh, as, as our people take that certification test or recertify, some of the information in the testing is even outdated by now. It changes so much. And so it's like, what's the right answer certification test? I don't know because I know what the real answer is, but what you probably want me to say is this. So what do you, what do, you do with all this information? It's so, like overwhelming. It is overwhelming. And that's what was kind of, Cool about reading all these 2021 predictions to me is that they're all the really, really small things. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're launching a sponsored brand, video and search, any of these new ad types. There's like two factors that I think still matter more than anything. And it's just like the keywords you're targeting and the bid or your CPC, both of those is going to be like the number one differentiating factor of your performance. So one of the recent podcasts you were on was with uh, Michael over at Ad Badger and uh, mad props to them. Very much respect what they're doing. Great podcast over there too. And you guys talked about day parting, which is the complete opposite of today's subject, right? So like you're, you're out there talking about the most advanced stuff ever and you pretty much indicted day parting in my opinion. Give me like the 20 second spiel on that. The reason I don't necessarily believe in day parting is we don't have the data. Amazon gives us kind of very fundamental data, but Amazon, if you take the accreditation course for DSP, releases the statement that the majority of purchases happen five days after a consumer's made aware of a brand. So what most people do is like, my ads aren't converting at midnight, so I'm gonna pause all those ads. But in reality, someone could be clicking on your ad at midnight and then not purchasing until, you know, eight o'clock the next day when they're in the office with the company credit card. So until we're given that information, I just don't think you can justify day party without the data. Well, I, I happen to agree with you. Um, and I, I, you know, I long talk about like the robots versus the humans and <laughs> the data and the Excel sheets and the macros and, and it's getting better and better. Don't get me wrong, but um, all right. So, so we kind of started this out to keep it basic. So we'll, we'll start it with basic. So, 
I guess, I guess the first question on most people's minds is, okay, I'm opening a, uh, a new product launch or, or an account. I've never done ads or I'm, I want to get back to the basics and redo my ads. What's the very first thing somebody should do? I personally recommend hopping in and creating a sponsored products campaign, or at least walking through what that looks like. One of the biggest, you know, misconceptions in Amazon advertising is that it does take a $5,000 budget to get something up and running and launching. And yes, for an appropriate launch strategy, you may need that much budget, but you can always start a campaign for $5 a day and play around with your bid. And then once you understand the correlation of a bid, a click, your CPC and an outcome, you can start scaling beyond that. But you can start incredibly small with any ad type on Amazon, which is something that I don't see a lot of people doing. So walk me through this a little bit. So I've got five bucks a day. I'm a new seller. And, uh, you know, what, what does five bucks a day come out to be? Let's, let's pull out the calculator. Five times 30 uh, 150 bucks a month. All right. So this is our starting, uh, test. And what, what should I do with that bid? What should I, should I be going middle of the road in the middle of the bid? Should I be doing super low bids? How should I start? I recommend starting with whatever it takes to understand the correlation between a bid. So as an example, it's really not that complicated to run Amazon ads. A plus B pretty much equals C for a lot of what we're doing because it is, you know, very much a combination of a human and a robot. So what I recommend is let's take one keyword, keep everything the exact same. Let's say we're bidding on the word highlighter. If I have a $5 a day budget and I set a $1 a day bid, that means I can get five clicks or a little bit more if my CPC is lower. But if I set a $1 a day or a $1 bid and I get no impressions, all that means is that my bid's probably too low. So what I always tell people is like, start with a low bid. If you don't get any impressions, all you have to do is increase your bid, especially if it's a relevant keyword. There's been times where, you know, as long as you have the max bid, you're going to get impressions even for keywords that aren't that relevant. So that's where I recommend starting. It's just getting impressions and clicks first. <laughs> So what if I build a campaign with high bids and I don't get impressions? What's typically going on there? It's typically not a high enough bid is honestly what we usually see. Now you can speak to this more than I can, but one of the things that it could be is Amazon's not indexing your listing with that keyword, which will affect your ads at times. Um, there are a few other metrics, but they're very, very small compared to what some of the gurus think they are on the Amazon advertising side. But if you're not indexing, you do need to do some things with your listing. But still, at the end of the day, if you bid $20, you're usually going to show up even if it's not that relevant. We, we've seen uh, certain categories have that problem worse than others. Uh, supplements always seems to hit, come up with that hit list of problems with ads. So it's, it's always you, 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 supplements, not the first product you should launch on Amazon. Let's go with yep. that. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, uh, so we're creating a, a brand new campaign. And we're putting in some, so we use this highlighter as the keyword example. So if you put in a dollar per bid, you're going to get five clicks a day. So uh, if I want to be profitable with this, I probably need to convert one of those five clicks, I suspect. So uh, with low budgets, you can't necessarily measure uh, perfectly well with, with a short amount of data. But I'm guessing that if we have a low budget and put in some appropriate bids, we're probably going to get some sales. What do you think? I think so. But it's a really good call out to have that there is correlation. And we always say make database decisions. And pretty much I everything I preach. I've had people come to me and basically be like, you know, I have a $20 product. I'm not going to spend, you know, more than $20 a day because I don't know if I'm going to be able to convert on that and things like that. But again, at the end of the day, it's all about the data. So if you're bidding on one keyword and you are getting clicks, you can easily predict like, what that's going to look like based off your conversion rate. If you get five clicks in one order, that's probably going to put you in a pretty good spot at 20% ACOS. So, so when somebody's first starting out, they probably don't even know uh, some of the basic terminology that we're throwing around so far. So let's, let's jump into that. All right. So what is a sponsored product? So a sponsored product ad is the ads that show up throughout search that look most like an organic listing. They say sponsored on the bra on the little bottom. And there's typically like 10 to 15 placements on page one. 
And then when you click into a product, they're the sponsored placements that show up on sponsored products related to directly below thy listing, which means that there's a ton of ad inventory for sponsored products. It's one of our most highest inventory placements. So it's a little bit cheaper because your cost per clicks are diversified and it does not require brand registry. So I've been doing uh, advertising on Amazon since advertising was in beta and uh, women's plus size clothing was the first items I sold. Um, I used to remember the days when I was working at a kitchen equipment company, getting two cent a click bids for rice cookers. Those were the days uh, you could just bank it on Amazon all day long. Nowadays, we're seeing cost per clicks uh, comparable to Facebook or Google. Um, so, so what, what should people know about when it comes to the costs and, and why should they still justify ads despite some of the higher costs these days? One of the biggest examples I give is Amazon advertising is still a marketing expense. It was fantastic five years ago when you got a ridiculous return on everything because there was so little competition, but anyone who owns a company, even the biggest brands in the world, Coke is paying for their on-platform presence, even though everyone knows what Coke is. And what's beautiful about Amazon ads is we know we're only targeting consumers that are in our aisle. So when I talk to brick and mortar brands, I'm like, you're willing to pay additional to get an end cap on a store in the hopes that consumers are going to walk by your aisle and possibly see your products and buy. Why wouldn't you pay that much to actually target consumers who are already in your aisle, not just in, you know, the toothpaste mouthwash aisle, they're directly in the section for electric toothbrushes. Like nowhere can we get those types of shopper insights. You can't get them on Facebook, even though you do get marketing insights. This is truly people who are looking for your products. It's, it's amazing to pay for that. <laughs> so there's, there's a several different types of campaigns. So we're going to start out with sponsored products. There's auto campaigns and manual. Um, the more sophisticated you get when you set up ads, the more likely you're going to have all of these types built. Um, why should we be doing both an auto and a manual? And what are those? So an auto campaign is a really great fundamental place to start because you're giving Amazon the control. You're setting a $5 a day budget, a $1 bid, and just letting Amazon basically show your ad where they think your ad should be shown. Now this is going to be based on the keywords in your listing. So that's why SEO and your listing is so dang important because where you show up on the page is going to be based off what you're telling Amazon you should be showing up for. So all those keywords. Now where auto campaigns are not fantastic is you're allowing Amazon to basically show you're at a hundred different places until they figure shotgun out. Shotgun approach. Yes. Shotgun approach. They're trying to figure out what consumers are seeing you're adding, clicking through the most, and then tying it back to those keywords. I love auto campaigns. We run them for our largest accounts and our biggest accounts still, but manual campaigns allow you direct control over where you're showing. So instead of being like, here, Amazon, take this $20 and try to figure out where I need to be shown. Manual campaign, you pick the keywords you directly want to show up for. So on a launch, I've actually kind of changed my viewpoint to recommending only manual campaigns on a launch because you're allowing Amazon to see exactly where you want to be shown rather than taking your money and spending it on testing until they figure out where you need to be shown. That, that is actually a pretty big shift. Uh, what brought you to make that change? I ran a test using suggested keywords. So I put, I searched for two products in Amazon, I actually did a pink heart sunglasses. I looked at one product that had no review history and had just launched. And I took that exact same product in another ASIN that had a high review count. And I created a sponsored product manual campaign. And I put each of those ASINs in two different campaigns. And I looked at the suggested keywords Amazon was giving me. For the brand new product, Amazon was suggesting the broadest keywords because they didn't know what the listing was indexed for, even though it was SEO optimized. They were showing sunglasses, sun, sunscreen, anything that could be tied back. But the one with high reviews and a lot of data was a much cleaner list of suggested keywords. So what this is telling me is in the beginning, Amazon's really not 100% sure. I mean, you have a strong listing, but they're still trying to figure out where to index. So I didn't want to give my money to Amazon to test. I know where it needs to be shown. So I was collecting data first. And then once Amazon started seeing that relevancy, I was launching an auto after I had data. So 
when we launch ads on a product launch, since we're talking about product launches, uh, do I have to have my first review on the listing or can I launch ads without one single review? We recommend launching without one single review if you're not doing a search find buy. Because if you're doing a search find buy, I don't want an audience to click twice. I don't want them to try to search for my products, but instead see my ad on page one and click on that instead of the organic placement on page four. But the reason we recommend it is if consumers don't have a reason not to purchase, they're more likely to purchase than if you have one review. <laughs> Most consumers are like, they don't know it doesn't really have reviews. Like people don't understand Amazon as well as we do. So they still end up converting typically. All right. So it's okay to run ads, even if you don't have reviews. Mm -hmm. um, there was a report I read the other day. I forget who it's from, but I have it on my YouTube channel uh, where one review will double the conversion rates on your listings. And by the way, I agree with you. I'm just quoting this yeah. report. Um, I would run ads without reviews all day long. Um, but it's interesting that once you get that first review, it doubles your conversion rate. So um, try and get that review in when you can. Uh, Vine early reviewer programs, um, not, not the greatest programs ever, but better than anything you can do currently. It's, it's pretty much impossible to generate reviews right now uh, uh -huh. without Amazon support. Um, okay, so, so we're, we're launching products. Uh, we, we, we're, we're building uh, our first advertising campaigns. We talked a little bit about auto and manual. Now, let's say I've set my campaign up after listening to this podcast. It's been three, four, five days. What do I do now? Optimize or see if you have enough data to optimize. I, I honestly think we could sit down and create like a bunch of if then statements on Amazon advertising. But what I typically recommend is opening up your campaign, looking at your keywords. If your keywords have no clicks, you probably need to increase your bid. If your keywords have 50 clicks and no orders, you should probably decrease your bid or even look at pausing it in the very beginning when you don't have high budgets. Our typical threshold we look for is at least eight to 10 clicks before we make any type of adjustment. So if I'm bidding on highlighter and I have seven clicks and no orders, that's not really a concern for me, even though it's a dollar bid. So that's probably gonna be a $7 I may lower my bid at that point just a little bit until I collect more data, which is where we could get into the complexities of bid management. But in general, we look for eight to 10 clicks on every single keyword before making any type of change. That's considered enough data for us. So I, I think that's a good uh, benchmark. Uh, so instead of clicks, you could also look at a dollar figure on that, um, depending on your scale. Um, you, you could be $20 when you first start out, you know, $20 and zero sales, you can make a change that might equate to eight to 10 clicks or it might be 20 clicks. Mm -hmm. Um, or if you're more advanced, um, as you start scaling, you might move that threshold up to 40 or $50. Um, just depends. Um, <clears throat> all right. So that, that's the, uh, the bid strategy for optimization. What are, what are some other common optimization we might need to run? I think it's really important, again, to understand the relationship between your spend and a bid and your number of clicks. Let's say, again, we go back to $1 on highlighter. If I get 10 clicks and zero orders, it's probably going to be $10 in spend. And if I have a $20 product, it's going to be a higher ACOS. So if I would have started with $0.50 cents and $10, that means I would have only spent $5 on a $20 product. So that means I'd be more profitable. So understanding that correlation is one of the most important things you can do. If you're able to get clicks on a 10 cent bid, you can get a hundred clicks in one order. And although your conversion rate is terrible, you can still be profitable on a higher price point product, which is like fundamentally understanding your bid management is one of the most important things you can do as you're scaling Amazon advertising. So, so let's talk about um, making money. Right. So is it okay to lose money while spending on advertising? Yes. If you have the cash flow to buy more inventory and run your business. <laughs> so, so, so why, why is that though? Like um, let's, let's use a, a comparison to SEO and PPC, right? So search engine optimization, pay-per-click advertising. How many SEO sales do you think you get for every PPC sale that comes in the door? I have no idea. I, I, I don't think there is actual proven data on this, by the way, but uh -huh. I, you know, I, I like to say it's three to one. So I think every PPC sale you generate generates three organic sales. So that's a made up stat on my part, but it feels correct. 
Um, so uh, that's that's my justification for spending money on advertising um, at a loss sometimes, right? So like sometimes if you uh, look at your break even point, right? So if uh, if your break even point is fifty percent, right? So if you spend fifty percent of what you uh, are charging the customers, so let's let's use some easy math. Let's say it's a twenty dollar item you can spend up to $10 to convert or acquire a customer. And that becomes profitable at break even because every PPC sale you generate will lead to three organic over the course of probably six months, right? So there's no correlated data on that. We don't really know if that's true or not, but we do know that there is a strong link between PPC and SEO because every time we spend money on PPC, our SEO keyword rankings go up. And if, SEO keyword rankings go up, you generate more sales without ads and you're generating them organically. All right. So, so that's, that's my opinion. What are, what are your thoughts? I couldn't agree more. Again, going back to traditional marketing expense, people pay money for radio campaigns or to put a billboard up and then they expect to track the increase in foot traffic. And that's kind of their metric there, which is okay, I guess. But why wouldn't you take that money and invest in your Amazon advertising, knowing that your ranking will increase? So when people tell me like, oh, we're just trying to get a 5% ACOS. Oh, I just want a 10% ACOS. I'm just trying to make money on ads. I'm like, do you not want to make money and build a brand in the long run? Unless you're ranking number one for every single one of your keywords you have ever converted on, it's probably worth investing in your Amazon advertising, knowing that your organic ranks can get better which means you're going to get more organic sales and purchases, which means you're probably going to get more views, stronger lifetime value if it's a replenishable, which means it's just going to spin the Amazon flywheel. So advertising is just like the basics of kind of what you need to do to really start moving that flywheel. And and now that we're talking about keywords, um, so... I, I took a, an intro call with somebody to be a prospective client today. I, I, I started looking at their, their indexing. I use a tool called Healing 10 and I looked through Cerebro to look at how many keywords are they advertising on and how many keywords were they indexing for SEO. And I noted on this particular account, they were advertising on 3000 keywords, but they were only indexing for 1500. So I knew that there was a, a strong inverse relationship here where they were not indexing for keywords, for organic um, uh, indexing that is showing up without an ad. And so it's interesting to see that. So, so in my opinion, I think uh, when people are, are first getting started, they should shoot for trying to index for about a thousand keywords. But then the question comes up, how many keywords should I advertise on? Is there a right or wrong answer to that? I, uh, my perception is going to be skewed because we only work with sellers that are primarily focused on scaling. So if you're a newer seller, I always kind of recommend starting smaller so that way your budget can collect data on all of your keywords. But we have accounts with like tens of thousands of search terms because we're investing in so many keywords. So I always recommend there's like thousands of different ways for one person to say one thing. And I think people don't really realize that on Amazon. You got to think of like the path a customer goes down in order to land on your page. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. If you have a high budget, you need to do that long tail, you know, customer search term research. You need to do all the product targeting, make sure you're targeting all your customers, which really does add up at the end of the day. So we're going to talk budgets in a second, but you used a buzzword, long tail keyword. Since this is a beginner tutorial, what's a long tail keyword? So to give an example, it's an Amazon advertising auction, right? So every single keyword I'm bidding on, like highlighter, you have you know 50 other people also bidding on that keyword, highlighter. So when I mentioned long tail keywords and anyone talks about that ranking, it's basically the search term that's tied to this main one, a highlighter, but that is a little bit more long tail, less specific. So maybe I'm looking for wide highlighter for Bible study. That is so much more long tail and there's more terms in it that make it longer, but it's also more niche in that less people are typing in wide highlighter for Bible than highlighter. And since less people are typing it in, less brands are thinking to come up with it and bid on it, which means it's much cheaper typically in the auction because it's not as competitive. Is, is it easier to sell a niche product on Amazon in your opinion from an advertising perspective? 
depending on what your goals are, I think it is a hundred percent easier. We're seeing CPCs upwards of $25 in the supplement space, but is it harder to scale potentially? Um, it depends on what type of alignment you have in that niche. If I was selling a highlighter for Bibles and it started getting a lot of traction, I gained a ton of reviews. And then I knew I can merge over into general high highlighters for college students. That would a thousand percent be the way to go. Definitely recommend finding your niche that you can dominate as long as it does have integration with someone else. All right. So let's talk budgets then. So when we first started this pod out, we talked about $5 a day, just get started. Right. So how do I know when I should take that $5 a day and turn it into 20, 50, maybe a hundred dollars a day? We scale everything that's working, which is the beauty of Amazon advertising. We have that data. Um, so if I have an ACOS I'm personally comfortable with, then I give it more budget, give it more budget. If I need to collect more data, because maybe I started with 10 keywords with my $5 a day budget and only two of them are getting traction, I would increase my budget for data collection. But the number one thing I would say not to do is to launch a campaign with 100 keywords in there. When you have a $10 a day budget, you're never, well, not, never not, not going to get enough data. To, I yeah, agree. It's going to take a long time to collect data on that. And that's where I see the biggest mistake being made. So, so hyper-focusing on, you know, smaller campaigns, less keywords, more relevant and hyper-focusing. That's kind of what I'm hearing from you. A hundred percent. And just do the math. If I know I have 10 keywords, I know I want to get 10 clicks across all those keywords and I know I'm bidding a dollar, then you can kind of break down what your budget. Maybe if you want to do that within a week, then a hundred dollar a week budget and see what happens. Now that's assuming Amazon evenly distributed our budget, which they don't, but it kind of helps you forecast. All right. So, so give me a bright line then. Um, how, how do I know when to double, triple or quadruple my ad spend? Generalized numbers we look for is 10% total average cost of sale. Is that still tacos? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I love me some tacos. So, so that, so for those that don't know what tacos are, other than that nice Mexican treat, mm -hmm. um, it, it is spending 10% of your desired gross sales on ads essentially is what it equates to. So you, instead of dividing your advertising spend into advertising revenue, you divide the total revenue on the account, not just the advertising revenue. All right. So, so if you're hitting 10%, it's time to raise your budgets. That's the number we like to see around. So if you raise your budgets and spend more on ads, then you need to make sure that your organic's increasing as well, which is the beauty of Amazon ads like we discussed. Now there is so many different variables in this scenario. If you have a high price point item, we've seen that tacos generally can be higher and you're still gonna be more profitable, but that's kind of what we like to look at. Now, if you're launching and you're not gonna have a strong organic rank, you can justify spending more on your advertising. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a business of cash flow. So you don't want to spend too much that you can't, you know, buy new inventory or invest in external. So it's kind of balancing that out as a brand owner. So is running ads easy or hard? I know that's a loaded question. <laughs> Trying to switch it up here. <laughs> Man, I personally think it's easy compared to everything else brand owners are doing. I am absolutely amazed by it. What I will say is if you don't have an affinity for it and you just kind of let it run in the background, that's probably not the best move because it takes a lot of time, a lot of time to learn every single new thing that's happening, a lot of time to optimize. Even if you're only running sponsored products, keyword targeting, you should be in the account optimizing incredibly frequency, frequently. And even if you have a software, there's so much that you could be doing as well. So if, if somebody um, wants to learn more and, and improve upon their advertising game, what should they be doing? Getting in the account themselves, not just outsourcing in the beginning. But in general, I think there's a ton of free work resources out there. Some of them are not so fantastic. Some of them are absolutely incredible. So find the credible sources that you really like and dive in as much as possible. I've never personally taken a paid course I got started just basically in an account with a $5 a day budget and just trying to figure things out. And by listening to all of the incredible people like you putting out free content like this or on YouTube, stuff like that. 
And, and uh, for somebody who might be a more advanced seller, uh, they can check out Better AMS. So Destiny, tell us a little about Better AMS. What do you guys do? Who do you focus on? So we, our whole team has a really great balance of working with some of the largest vendors in the space. Some of our team members have, you know, grown and sold their own private label brands, but we only focus on Amazon advertising. So I'm like allowed to dive into all the random data and all the small incremental things because that's all I have time for. But we specifically focus on scaling on platform ads from sponsored products all the way to DSP for large sellers in the space. So we typically only work with sellers that are doing around $100,000 a month minimum just because our focus is on scaling. But yeah. That's what we do. Well, it's it's never uh, it's never easy to go alone or without help, uh, so to speak. So definitely uh, hit that subscribe button so you can get some more content out. We we try and do a big mix at my Amazon guy. We're, we do mostly focus on advanced stuff on our podcast, but it's good to mix it up. Do a do a beginner's course every so often. All right, so Destiny, uh, now that we're kind of wrapping up our podcast here. Uh, you can you you get the last word here. What else do you look forward to in 2021? So much opportunity for creative on Amazon, which is I feel like one of the things that they're really missing the most. When, when, when you say creative, do you mean creative in advertising, or do you mean A plus well, content creative? A little bit of everything. So I'm really excited to see the direction their new post and following uh, goes with stores. I think that they're going to roll out some capabilities, potentially be able to have like an on-platform launch strategy. You're getting more metrics like reach in posts where, you know, our video opportunities, our custom image opportunities, all of these we actually dove into on our last podcast. But I think that they're just going to continue to expand that to allow brands to really differentiate. They're kind of trying to grow out of their private label phase, I think, and grow more into a dominant brand phase. You almost could say that Amazon is just beginning. That's the title of our last podcast. So um, <laughs> good good theme to continue on as we end our podcast today. Well, thank you so much, Destiny, for, for joining us uh, on our podcast today. Uh, you can find more about Destiny with uh, Better AMS. And where should people go? Check us out on YouTube, Better AMS, or betterams.com for our website, or check me out on LinkedIn. All right. Thanks so much, Destiny. Thank you, Steven. Go to myamazonguy.com and check out our full service management. We're a great agency to hire uh, for your first agency, or, or maybe you've got um, an agency that's in place that you've outgrown. Check us out as well. We're a 30 person agency based out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. We share all of our trade secrets openly. So you can, you know, by the time you're done watching or listening to this podcast, there is some level of trust that you might have before you even get on a call with us. And that's because we basically just revealed our full strategy for you on how to grow sales on Amazon, right? Uh, so when you when you start executing with us, we're going to be executing about the things we just talked about. And and it's not necessarily a secret sauce. It just takes effort, just takes grinding. So my name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. Every single person who goes to myamazonguy.com and contacts us and fills out some information, I read every single one of those personally and I will respond to them um, to help give you opportunities or options to help grow your sales on Amazon or solve a problem. So feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're not quite ready to hire us. Keep, keep watching, keep listening. We'll keep adding value wherever we can. We're always on the lookout to tell um, stories about you know other Amazon sellers. So if you got a journey you wanna talk to us about, we'd be happy to do that. Just send us an email to podcasts at myamazonguy.com.